Hi, I'm Rashi and I'm the founder at Nutrition in Sync, where we specialize in health concerns like PCOS, endometriosis, gut health, weight loss, and even diabetes. Now look, if you have PCOS, I understand that you don't feel like yourself right now. Your hormones are all over the place and you might be a complete mess, you know. I've struggled with endometriosis and a whole lot of hormonal issues, so trust me, I get you. But I'm here to show that you can actually manage it beautifully by understanding what's really going on and then taking the right action. But first, let's see why the word PCOS is now said to be quite misleading by the medical fraternity. It's misleading because it's confusing, you know. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. When you read it out loud, you automatically think it's got to do with cysts in your ovaries. But what about the people who don't have cysts and still have the same symptoms? That's why they've now decided to call it metabolic and reproductive syndrome. And that sounds kind of right because it's a metabolic disorder because of all the hormonal changes that happen. And yes, it affects your reproductive organs and not just the ovaries. So now that we know our justifiable term for your condition, let's understand the basics of it. So when you're born, right, you are born with all the eggs that you're ever going to have. And by the time you reach puberty, the number of eggs considerably reduce. Now, once you start getting your period, every month your body will make a set of eggs, say about 20, out of which one of them gets developed or matures. It releases when you ovulate in the hope of making a baby. And when this doesn't happen, that's when your uterus lining thickens and you start shedding, which basically marks the start of your period. Now with women who have PCOS, too many eggs start to develop at the same time. None of them reach the point of maturation where they neither make a baby nor do they shed through the uterus, which is why in 99% of the cases, irregular or delayed periods is one of the most common signs of PCOS. And when you get your ultrasound done, you will see that there are numerous eggs as small cysts on your ovaries. Now here's the thing, each one of you have PCOS, you have a different type or there's a combination. But hear me out, there are four types of PCOS that we know for now. The first one is insulin sensitive PCOS. Now 70% of you fall in this category and this is when your body cannot metabolize carbs properly. The second one is post pill PCOS. Generally when you stop taking birth control pills, if you've taken it for six months or more, then it could manifest in your body as post birth control syndrome. Then there's adrenal PCOS and this is because your DHEAS, those levels are very high because you're not capable of managing your stress really well or your body is basically lacking the coping mechanism around certain events in your life. Now DHEAS is a male sex hormone and if it's high then you will see a whole lot of you know excessive facial hair, changes in your voice too. Then there's inflammatory PCOS and this is where your gut is constantly taking a hit and it's accompanied by high HSCRP levels, joint pain, eczema, even psoriasis in some of you. HSCRP is basically an inflammatory marker and of course if the inflammation is high in your body that will be higher as well. Now it's possible that you might not fall in just one type, you might have a combination or, or two. Now here's how you reach a definite diagnosis. You can say for sure that you have PCOS only if you check out three of the things I'm about to tell you. Number one, more follicles in your ovaries and this you can do through an ultrasound. Number two, excess androgens, this you can do through a simple blood test. And number three, irregularities in your period. Now when you visit a doctor, a lot of times doctors will either recommend OCPs, which is a birth control pill, or they recommend metformin. I'm not a fan of either and here's why. Look, you don't need OCPs as a first line of action. And for all the girls out there who are taking OCPs right now or have been recommended this, here's why you shouldn't jump on it just yet. It can lead to PBCS, which is post birth control syndrome, where the hormonal imbalance is obviously back because you haven't addressed the root cause, right? So there'll be acne, hair fall, you'll find it hard to lose weight. You will also be really anxious. And this is not it. In addition to all of this madness, your libido levels never go back to normal because your SHBG levels, which decides what your libido would be like, never goes back to pre-pill level. Look, OCPs include synthetic forms of hormones like estrogen and progesterone. We naturally in our body have a rise and fall of these hormones and hence a steady supply of these hormones will only worsen the condition as these pills literally cut off the communication between your brain and ovaries. There's a lot of recent research which also proves that there's a bi-directional relationship between oral estrogen and our gut bacteria called the estrogen gut axis. And hence use of OCPs increases gut permeability, which leads to gut sensitivity. You can feel gassy, bloated, and you won't lose weight easily. 
Look, we have to keep in mind that there are sometimes genetic differences that come into play and some people actually do well on OCPs. But again, in my opinion, from all the experience that I've had in my clinical practice, using it as first line of action never really works. Most often, most women don't need it. If they are willing to change their lifestyle, eat the right food, get the right nutrients and supplements included, then they just don't need these pills. Now let's talk about metformin or glucophage, right? If you're on these, I want you to think twice and maybe start the other three supplements that I'm about to mention. You can get off the metformin or glucophage over time. Now, I strongly recommend that before you start supplements, you fix your lifestyle too, because supplements don't work without you doing the real work. And secondly, please speak to your gynec, healthcare practitioner, nutritionist, whoever's recommended the pills to you before you actually start the ones I'm about to tell you. Here we go. Now, number one would be omega-3. It not only works wonders for your hormones, but also your skin and overall inflammation in the gut. It is best known to reverse insulin sensitivity, guys. And that is where 70% of you fall, right? Insulin sensitive PCOS. So all of you should be taking this one. Secondly would be berberine. Now, I love this because it triggers the AMPK pathway, which means it regulates cellular metabolism, increases glycolysis, which is the rate at which glucose is broken down in your body to produce energy. This leads to decreased insulin resistance and it also reduces elevated androgen levels in the blood. It's perfect for your acne too. And number three, instead of starting with OCPs, what I would recommend is that you switch to an appropriate supplement which has myo-inositol plus d inositol in the ratio of 40 is to 1. That would be the key and that's the one that really works. In this combination, it works just like metformin. But obviously without the side effects, right? In the right combination and dosage, it has helped so many of our clients literally reverse. And when I say reverse, I mean complete remission of their symptoms. But we take a very conscious call before recommending any of this and we constantly keep changing their diet and their lifestyle and other supplements to finally get them off the pills and of course OCP is included in this. So if your doctor recommends metformin, glucophage, etc. to cope with this condition, consider supplements along with lifestyle changes instead of choosing medicines as the first line of action. I also wanted to leave you with very basic lifestyle tweaks which I know have helped so many people every single time. Number one, fat first. Maintaining your blood sugar levels is one of the smartest way to reduce your calorie consumption throughout the day naturally. Now fat first basically means that you're going to start your day with a teaspoon of ghee, butter, coconut oil, basically a good source of fat. It's common sense, right? Because keeping your blood sugar levels stable is good for everybody. It keeps you feeling fuller for longer. It keeps your insulin levels balanced and your hormones stable. Number two would be be carb conscious. Active carbs are the ones that raise your sugar levels really quickly. So rice, I know we love these, but rice, roti, bread, potatoes, pasta, all of these are active carbs and they cause a lot of problem. Carbs are not the problem, but too many of them are because they're going to spike your sugar levels too quickly, right? So what you're going to do is add a whole lot of fiber from vegetables to carbs like rice, bread, potato, pasta, etc. So they release very slowly in your bloodstream. I love the ratio of 1 is to 3 where the active carbs are 1. And of course, the vegetables are three. And number three, a lot of us forget about this, but guys, it's about emotional well-being. Our body is a representation of our thoughts, feelings and emotions. So if you have difficult emotions which you haven't processed or aren't aware of, it has no place to go. It is going to show up as a health concern in your body. We know so much about this and there's so much research about this now. So I urge you, if you are struggling with a health concern that's troubling you a lot, look a little deeper and start seeing the emotional reasons for that as well. You can do a whole lot of things like taking therapy, doing mindfulness rituals. I talk a lot about water memory and even things like grounding to ease those emotions and process them. But just remember that addressing these emotions is a very important part of taking care of your overall health. I hope this video helped and I hope you didn't get too overwhelmed by it. But trust me, once you start taking all of these small, small steps together, over a period of time, say about 12 weeks, you're going to see a massive difference in your body. If you have questions, post them below because we'd love to take them up.